Okay, hi class. Uh, welcome to the online session. Uh, this is my last session with you for general pathology and uh, and this hopefully this will be our uh, last online session. Okay, so uh, fortunate for you, you have experienced this one, and maybe you are the first or maybe you are the last to hold the, this online session and this is because of the circumstances that we have so we are going to have uh, five slides for this session we have slide 249 we have meningioma we have slide 20 this is astrocytoma uh, slide 91 that's glioblastoma multiforme we have slide 180 that is brain signal plaque that would be for Alzheimer's as well as slide 231. Okay, so we are going to start. Okay, so our first slide would be on uh, slide 249. Uh, this is labeled as uh, meningioma so uh, meningioma is uh, it is a tumor that would be attached to the dura that's why when we would be given a request we usually would ask our residents where is the location of the tumor is it extra dural or within so it means if it's extradural chances are it's a meningioma um, but it uh, because it would be derived or it would arise from the meningothelial cells of the arachnoid however it can also be seen uh, within the the ventricles because it may arise from the stromal arachnoid of the choroid plexus uh, what are the mutations that we would associate it with? Uh, it's associated with chromosome 22 loss uh, that would result to an F2 genetic mutation in 50 to 60 percent. There's also mutation towards the TRAF or the TNF receptor associated factor 7. Uh, there are several variants for meningioma and one of them would be the syncytial variant. Okay, so when you have the syncytial variant, you would see uh, the presence of the whirling pattern of the spindle cells like this. Okay, so this would be the syncytial variant. Uh, there's also what uh, what you call as the fibroblastic variant, when we would see the presence of uh, spindle cells, spindle to uh, spindle elongated cells that would be surrounded by a lot of dense collagen here's another one okay you can see the presence of dense collagen uh, and then you have the spindle cells like fibroblasts so this would be called fibroblastic okay uh, however because this would be seen in uh, in one specimen we can call it as transitional okay when you have a combination uh, and then we also would be able to identify for the presence of a, a structure that is associated with meningioma okay this is the one the one in the center okay this one so this is what we call as samoma body so the samoma body would be a, a concentric laminated calcified structure and this would be seen as a feature of of meningioma okay uh, meningiomas would be uncommon in children it has a female predominance and for females who have meningiomas during the course of pregnancy uh, these meningiomas may express progesterone receptors and they can grow during pregnancy so our next slide is slide 20, which is uh, astrocytoma. 
and astrocytoma would fall under the glioma tumors okay so glioma tumors would mean that this would be a group of brain tumors that would involve the uh, stromal cells okay so the stromal cells here like the astrocytes would uh, be uh, the cells that would form the tumor um, so the astrocytoma would be composed of neoplastic astrocytes okay. uh, the who criteria for or classification for astrocytoma uh, would divide it into or categorize it into four grades one two three and four depending on cellularity depending on pleomorphism mitosis necrosis or endothelial cell proliferation Astrocytoma uh, shows p53 and idh mutation uh, this is the diffuse type okay, wherein you have the diffuse proliferation of the astrocytes you're going to grade it look at the cellularity okay it's cellular and then you look at the uh, variation in the size of the nuclei okay there's mild to moderate then most probably this is grade one to two okay there's upsets of mitosis you can see some uh, proliferating vascular channels but they are not seen in aggregates so this would still be normal or part of the uh, blood vessel proliferation of uh, of the tumor okay so this is astrocytoma uh, we have the aggressive type for astrocytoma and that would be the anaplastic type that would fall under grade 3 uh, but you need to find the presence of mitosis or mark geomorphism slide 91 is glioblastoma multiforme okay so glioblastoma multiforme would be the grade 4 astrocytoma and this is characterized by the presence of all those those requirements that i that i have uh, told you the presence of mark pleomorphism nuclear pleomorphism uh, bizarre nuclear appearances presence of mitosis cellularity uh, necrosis and the formation of glomeruloid body or the presence of endothelial cell proliferation okay so um, it's associated with mutation towards ptem chromosome 10 would be lost egfr would be amplified uh, there's deletion of the cdk n2a p53 idh and nf2 if it's mesenchymal so let's try to look at the features okay so first thing is i told you that we would see presence of cellularity presence of uh, pleomorphism so you can see you have presence of uh, enlarged nuclei uh, binucleation multinucleation would be present prominence of the nucleolus okay? um, and then we would see the presence of mitosis so let's try to look for mitosis huh? okay. so mitosis is characterized by the presence of uh, uh, of a pseudopalisading okay so here so uh, this would be the necrotic area and then notice that there's the cell cell surrounding the necrotic area uh, having a pseudopalisading appearance like that of schwannoma so these are all two more cells this would be the necrotic area let's try to look for another side okay this one so this is also a necrotic area the one in the middle you have the pseudo palisading of the cells okay that's a uh, necrosis uh, one more okay here this one this is also a necrotic area you can see the pseudo palisading okay so this one is also a necrotic area okay 
necrotic area with the pseudo palisading you have a lot of necrosis this one this is another one you have the center necrotic area pseudo palisading okay and then we try to look for aggregates of of uh, here you have some aggregates okay. aggregates of of uh, blood vessels that would comprise the endothelial cell proliferation I think there are other areas let's try to find them here you have some uh, should be aggregates okay, here you have some uh, this one you have an aggregate okay, of blood uh, this one this one I think this is a better uh, better uh, uh, this is a better appreciation of that uh, glomeruloid body okay so you have the presence of blood vessels it aggregates uh, in the book it says that the blood vessel should at least have uh, double layering of the uh, endothelial cell so you can see the presence of the double layer of the of the endothelial cells endothelial layer okay so this is slide 91 glioblastoma multiforme now we're going to alzheimer's disease slide 180 uh, and 231 so 180 is labeled as brain senile plaque and then slide 231 is labeled as Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so what is Alzheimer's disease? This is a, uh, it's a degenerative disease that would uh, cause dementia in older adults. It's the most common cause of dementia in older adults. A and Cognitive function would be impaired once they have it within 5 to 10 years. Its abnormality would be caused by the presence of two proteins uh, being accumulated. That's the amyloid beta and the tau protein. So for the, uh, the, the amyloid beta would be forming plaques okay, like this one. So you have the presence of this uh, sphere or spheroid nodule uh, with a pink uh, color this would be the amyloid plaque uh, so this is amyloid beta and we do not see in this particular slide the tau okay the tau is the neurofibrillary tangle so where do we uh, get this one it is derived from the ATP the amyloid precursor protein uh, the gene is located on chromosome 21 and if it's uh, mutated it would increase the amyloid production more so if there's duplication of the chromosome 21 and the aggregation of the amyloid beta would be called oligomers and the oligomers would be the toxic form because th those are the aggregates of amyloid beta and uh, take note, this can also be the ev eventual feature for the occurrence of dementia in patients with uh, Down syndrome, the trisomy 21. Take note, chromosome 21. Okay, so uh, there's another mutation, gain of function of PS1 and PS2 that would lead to increased uh, secretion of amyloid beta. Okay, so we are going to look for those nodular or spheroid uh, structures okay so this is uh, these are the spheroid uh, structures this one also okay so there's a lot of them here they are colored pink so very easy to identify okay um, if you want to view uh, them in a different microscope you have to use Congo red stain. Okay, here here's uh, more of them. Okay, you can see the round or the nodular appearance. Okay, uh, 
you use congruent stain using the polarizing microscope and it will show a an apple green biorefringence. Okay, our last slide is slide 231. Okay, slide 231 is labeled as amyloid plaque. So what we are going to look for would be the presence of those uh, those plaques okay, which we have seen as colored pink. This one is H and E more difficult to locate. So what you have to first uh, uh, find would be the presence of those spaces. Okay, you have spaces here, but take note the one in the center has a it's it has a something inside it. Okay, it has a translucent quality. Those are the amyloid plaque. So the amyloid plaques here are one, two, three, four. Okay, let's uh, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. I think I saw another one. This is five, six. Okay, so you can see them. You just okay. You have you just have to look for them. Okay, so again they are nodular or rounded uh, forms. And they are translucent when you look at slide 231. What about the tau? Okay, the tau would be the neurofibrillary tangle. Where do you see it within the cytoplasm of the neurons? So let's try to look for them within the neurons. So the tau would be this is a microtubule that would be seen within the cytoplasm okay, of uh, of the neurons or it can be located adjacent to it like this one so this can be a tau this can be new these are tangles okay neurofibrillary tangles how do we uh, diagnose or test it we use silver stain okay to highlight for the presence of those proteins okay so it can be seen within the cytoplasm or extracellularly like this okay this one so this would be the tau protein um okay so th that's the last slide that we have uh so kindly study okay so we have the prelims the midterms ah uh, no pre-finals and midterms and compre coming up so start study well stay safe and good night okay